Hello everyone, and welcome to this Diablo 3 video. Today we're going to be showcasing the Witch Doctor Mundanugu's Regalia set, and specifically we're going to go over the Greater Rift pushing variation of the build. So if you want to make high level Rift Guardians disappear like this, keep watching for how to set this build up and for some tips on how to play with it. So up front, let's take a quick look at the set bonuses so we'll know what we have to work with. This set is relatively straightforward with what it provides. The two-piece bonus allows the Big Bad Voodoo skill to last twice as long and follow you around, making it much more useful than in the base case. This skill offers increased attack speed and movement speed and also grants some extra life regeneration and a significant toughness increase with the right runes selected. The four-piece bonus provides a straight-up toughness increase anytime you enter the Spirit Realm, which you will do by activating the Spirit Walk skill. This is the primary mobility skill for Witch Doctors, so you are already motivated to use it. Having this huge toughness increase is a major added bonus, and plus it lasts a really long time, much longer than the base cooldown on Spirit Walk, so you'll have this buff active virtually permanently throughout a rift. And for the six piece bonus, this is where your damage comes from. The Spirit Barrage skill gets a straight up significant damage increase. There is also a component where your mana regeneration rate adds even more damage output, but this bonus isn't very significant, so it's typically not worth targeting mana regeneration in lieu of other stats or skills. So overall, the set bonuses are straightforward and very simple to activate. However, the overall build is a bit more complicated under the hood given the other gear pieces that synergize with the set and make it even more powerful. And we'll go through all of that in more detail in the gear section of this guide. Next up, let's take a look at the skills before we run through the recommended gear pieces. The first skill is Spirit Barrage, which is mandatory for us to benefit from the 6 piece set bonus. We take the Manata Rune for additional damage output. Recognize that through gear pieces, we will also obtain the rune effects from the Spirit is Willing, Phantasm, and Phlebotomize runes. Next, we take Big Bad Voodoo, which as mentioned previously, we'll want to use to benefit from the two-piece set bonus. We select the Ghost Trance rune to mainly gain some additional toughness. The next skill is Spirit Walk, which is mandatory for the build. Activating Spirit Walk will make you immune to damage for a short period of time, allowing you to move freely through enemies, and it will also leave you with a significant residual toughness increase through the four-piece set bonus. We take the Jaunt rune to increase its duration. Next, we have Soul Harvest with the Languish rune. This is a very common staple of many Witch Doctor builds. It grants you a big damage output and toughness bonus, and also gives you a bit of defensive utility with its slowing effect. Next, we take the Piranha skill with the Piranado rune. This is another common staple for Witch Doctors, allowing you to group up enemies in tighter packs. This synergizes well with the Spirit Barrage skill for dealing damage to enemies, specifically with the Phantasm Rune effect, which has a short range. And in the last skill slot, we have Locust Swarm. By using the Ring of Emptiness, this skill will enable you to do significant amplified damage to enemies. We select the Pestilence Rune to help more quickly spread the effect to virtually every enemy on the screen with only one cast of this mana intensive spell. For the passive skills, the first one we take is Grave Injustice. We take this skill mainly for the cooldown reduction component, which will allow us to use Big Bad Voodoo, Spirit Walk, and Piranhas more often. The next passive skill is Confidence Ritual, which grants a sizable damage output increase. And next, we take Swampland Attunement, which grants some additional toughness through resistances. Keep in mind that these first three passive skills have a base 20 yard range to them. We will typically be fighting in close proximity to enemies, so we should benefit from them often. And for the last passive skill slot, we take Spiritual Attunement to help offset the mana cost of Spirit Barrage and Locust Swarm and to provide a damage increase with its mana regeneration through the 6 piece set bonus. If you don't have issues with mana regeneration, then definitely consider swapping this last passive skill for another. There's a few other options that work well with the build. Next up, let's go through the gear choices. For the Mundanugu set itself, you're going to equip 5 of the 6 pieces in the head slot, shoulders, torso, hands, and legs. In order to benefit from the 6 piece set bonus, we will need the Ring of Royal Grandeur which we have slotted in Kanai's Cube. In the Waist and Feet slots, we equip the Captain Crimson's trimming set pieces. With Ring of Royal Grandeur in Kanai's Cube, we'll have access to the 3 piece set bonus which grants powerful damage output and toughness bonuses from our cooldown reduction and resource cost reduction. Note that you can wear Captain Crimson's in either the Legs or the Feet slot as long as you have Mundanugu's equipped in the other one. For the wrist slot, we have Lakumba's Ornament, which is a common staple for many Witch Doctor builds and provides a significant toughness bonus when using Soul Harvest, giving even more toughness for this build that will often be within melee range. When it comes to jewelry, in the neck and one of the finger slots, we use the two-piece Endless Walk set with the Traveler's Pledge and the Compass Rose. This set provides either increased toughness or damage output based on if you're moving or standing still. Since we'll often be standing still casting Spirit Barrage, we will mainly benefit from the increased damage output. Then, in the other finger slot, we take Ring of Emptiness. 
This ring provides a huge damage increase when attacking enemies with the Locust Swarm effect on them. So casting Locust Swarm and letting it spread is vital for your overall damage output. For the weapon slot, we take the Ceremonial Knife, Vu's Juicer, which grants the effects of two additional runes on the Spirit Barrage skill, providing some valuable life and mana regeneration. And in the offhand slot, we take Gazing Demise, which grants several buffs to Spirit Barrage, including a damage increase, an additional rune, and a couple of buffs to rune effects. When it comes to rerolling item properties at the Mystic, make sure you obtain cooldown reduction where you can, especially in the shoulders and offhand. You can also get it on the hands and jewelry slots, but remember, there are diminishing returns. Cooldown reduction not only allows you more frequent access to your skills, but it also grants additional damage output to the Captain Crimson's 3-piece set bonus. You'll also want to make sure you obtain increased Spirit Barrage damage on your head and feet slots. And the Manitow room for the Spirit Barrage skill is cold-based, so you'll ideally want the cold damage rolls on your wrist slot and neck slot. Next, for Kanai's Cube in the weapon slot, we take the Barber, which gives a damage bonus to the Spirit Barrage skill. This legendary power also slightly changes how the skill works, with a bit of an interesting mechanic, which we'll talk through a little more later in the guide. In the armor slot, we take Frostburn, which provides a damage buff for cold skills, syncing up well with the Spirit Barrage cold rune, and it also provides a bit of defensive utility with a chance to stun. And in the jewelry slot, of course, as mentioned previously, you'll need to have the Ring of Royal Grandeur to activate the 6-piece Mundanugus and the 3-piece Captain Crimson set bonuses. Then, for legendary gems, you'll want to go with Bane of the Trapped, this gem will make enemies take additional damage when they're under control impairing effects, which you will passively activate by being close to monsters thanks to the gem's own aura, via procs from the Frostburn Legendary Power in Kanite's Cube, and via your Soul Harvest and Piranha skills. Next, you'll want to have Gogok of Swiftness. This gem provides increased damage output, toughness, and cooldown reduction, and is easily maintained with periodic cast of Spirit Barrage. And for your third gem, you'll want Bane of the Stricken for increased damage output, particularly against Rift Guardians. And then, for regular gems, you'll go with a diamond in the helm for extra cooldown reduction, amethyst in your torso and leg slots for increased toughness, and an emerald socketed in your weapon for increased damage output. So now that we've gone through all this setup, let's head into a few greater rifts and talk through some of the key points of the playstyle. There's a lot to take in with this set and all of its associated items. It's a complicated setup with all the bonuses, but the playstyle is pretty chill and straightforward. A lot of the bonuses are just inherently built in, and while it can benefit you to understand what's going on behind the scenes, it's not critical to know it all to play it. When you first enter a rift, make sure to cast Spirit Walk early on to activate the toughness benefit from the 4-piece set bonus. For the rest of the rift, you'll want to make sure to cast it pretty often to maintain this buff, but the buff duration is pretty long, so you shouldn't have to worry about keeping track of it. Not only will you receive the big toughness benefit from the 4-piece set bonus, You'll also benefit from the Spirit Walk skill itself, which is extremely powerful. You're able to freely walk through enemies and obstacles during its duration to help reposition yourself, and you're also still able to cast while in the Spirit Realm, all while you take zero damage. All of these effects make you really tanky. The cooldown on Spirit Walk is relatively short, so I basically cast it whenever it's available to get the most out of the skill. But when it's on cooldown, it is important for you to be aware of your positioning so you can avoid getting trapped or taking lethal damage. Also remember to reposition yourself into Oculus Ring procs as much as you can. Your followers should be equipped with the Oculus Ring so you can benefit from the effect. After Spirit Walk, you'll want to prioritize getting close to a group of enemies and casting Soul Harvest to activate its big toughness and damage output buffs. I also basically cast this skill on cooldown to keep those buffs refreshed and benefit from its slowing effect. Just recognize that you need to hit at least one enemy when you cast it to refresh it. But this shouldn't be an issue since we are generally motivated to be within melee range of monsters while dealing damage. The next buff you'll need to activate is the Big Bad Voodoo skill, which grants increased damage output, toughness, and recovery. You'll want to try to cast this spell when you're engaging larger packs of enemies to get the most out of it. It has a relatively long cooldown, and even though this build has a lot of cooldown reduction, you won't necessarily be able to keep the buff active 100% of the time. If you're playing on lower difficulties where you can kill enemies quickly, then the Grave Injustice passive skill can help reset the skill's cooldown quickly. But on higher difficulties, you may not always be killing enough monsters fast enough to keep the buff active. Having said that, I do tend to generally cast the skill on cooldown, assuming I'm in combat, just so I don't have to keep track of its duration. Once you have all of your buffs active, then you're ready to get the enemy groups prepped. Your damage comes purely from the Spirit Barrage skill, and the range on the Phantasm Rune is relatively short. So you'll first want to group up enemies using the Piranha skill. This will keep monsters grouped up in a tight pack so they don't scatter and move around on you. The skill's cooldown is relatively short, so this is another one you can basically cast whenever it's available. After casting Piranhas, you'll next want to cast Locust Swarm. 
Enemies affected by this skill take a tremendous amount of extra damage from the Ring of Emptiness you have equipped. With the Pestilence rune selected, Locust Swarm will jump to nearby enemies in a continuous chain. You'll see this indicated by green beans jumping from monster to monster. A single cast of Locust Swarm is a sufficient catalyst to get the debuff applied to virtually every monster on the screen. You can cast a couple of them to help propagate it quicker in large packs of enemies, but be careful casting it too much because it is a mana intensive spell. Plus, it only lasts a few seconds, so you will need to refresh it fairly often on tougher enemies. Make sure you keep it refreshed because the extra damage is vital in higher greater rift levels. And next, you're ready to deal damage with Spirit Barrage. Here, there are two basic methods to apply the damage. First, you can leverage the legendary power of the Barber assigned to Kanai's Cube by standing still and continuously casting Spirit Barrage. This will initially delay the bulk of Spirit Barrage's damage, but it will equate to more overall damage once you stop casting. Alternatively, you can leverage the Phantasm Rune of Spirit Barrage by casting the skill separate discrete times to lay down your three Phantasms and let them do their work. This will allow you to be mobile in between casts so you can reposition yourself to avoid incoming damage or just keep moving forward. Periodic casts like this can also help you maintain or regain your mana level to ensure you have mana available to refresh Locust Swarm for the damage buff or to cast Piranhas for crowd control. You also want to make sure you cast Spirit Barrage often enough to maintain stacks of the Gogok of Swiftness gem. Overall, either of these damage application methods is viable. Remember, to benefit from many of the build's buffs, you will want to be standing relatively close to enemies, and you will want to cast your phantasms on top of each other, on top of enemy packs. Staying at close range will also allow the spirit bolts from the Manitow rune to continuously fire at nearby enemies. On Rift Guardians at the end of a rift, you'll generally want to continuously cast Spirit Barrage, accumulating the damage, and also accumulating stacks of the Bane of the Stricken Legendary Gem. This will be a slow buildup over a minute or two, but once you have Bane of the Stricken at a high number of stacks, you'll really start to do significant damage. It is very likely that you will take the Rift Guardian from half health to zero in an instant when the Spirit Barrage damage is triggered, so don't get discouraged if you're close to the time limit and just keep pumping out those casts. So with that, we'll wrap it up. I hope that you found something useful, and I hope you enjoy playing with this build. And as always, if you enjoyed the guide and would like to see more content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.